bitch, you make Take me curl. Curl. Superman. Beat tall hoes in a single bound. I'm single now. Got no ring on his finger now. I never let another chick bring me down in a relationship. What is going on guys, Jack here and I have a odd one today, um, this video is going to be, the rude, this video is going to be a, a vlog um, because we are going to Liverpool today to see Jack Whitehall, now for those of you who don't know who Jack Whitehall is, he's a comedian from the UK, he's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. He's a very funny guy. Um, and me, Lee, and Stephen, or me and Levin, are uh, going to go see him tonight at eight o'clock. So uh, I'll probably be vlogging, uh, vlogging, vlogging. I'll probably be vlogging the whole thing. So I will see you soon. I'm gonna push the button right now. as you are chaps <laughs> I have a treat for you though an extra special treat because you're so wonderful I'm not the only comedian that you're going to be hearing from this evening because I've also brought with me a fantastic support act he's one of the funniest comedians working on the circuit today, he's a good friend of mine go wild, go crazy for the brilliant Lloyd Griffiths My name is Lloyd. Um, I'm Jack's mate. Bugger. <laughs> now, I, um, that was weird, wasn't it? Yeah. Did everyone, did everyone see that? It just went dark, apart from this chubby face on those two screens. <laughs> now, I'm a big Grimsby Town fan. I go to a lot of Grimsby Town football matches. Uh, I went to a Grimsby Town versus Doncaster match. It was about a month ago. Now, Grimsby and Doncaster, we're not rivals like, say, Everton and uh, Southport, but we like to take the piss. <laughs> There's one particular game, a lot of the Grimsby fans, me included, shouting over to the Rovers fans, things like, um, You sleep with your sisters! Like top quality banter, absolute <laughs> top notch banter. But then, quick as a flash, like, right, you ready, you ready, three, two, one. Yes, we do! Yes, we do! But honestly, to this day, I'm not entirely sure if they're being serious or hilarious, but either way, we're like, oh, that is fucking funny, well done. There's this one Doncaster fan, we'd clearly touched the nerve. He stood up, he did one of the funniest things I think I've ever seen or heard at a football match, and we're going to recreate it here tonight in the Echo Arena. When I give the word zigger, 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 you shout the word Doncaster. When I give you a letter, you give me that same letter back, and this is genuinely what happened at the Keepmo Stadium. He got up there, bold as brashes, and zigger, zigger, zigger! Very nice, but that is very middle class on a Sunday night. I mean, this is dirty, guttural Yorkshire. When you're saying it, imagine you're having a shit. That's kind of what I'm for. <laughs> we all pull it off, okay? If you didn't, you'd be dead. Here we go. Singer, singer, singer! Doncaster! G! G! O! O! N! N! C! C! It's the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> in the house as well as hometown, the town that presumed he was once probably born in. He looked down at his mate with mate, what's next? His friend just looked up and started pissing himself. Oh, we're laughing to add insult to injury. The bloke at the end of the road just went, Oi mate, you just put QPI in the bed, that's just three letters to learn. <laughs> this guy, he's undeterred. He went, right, grab me a programme. This programme came shuffling along the line. The little man, he read out the letters to the big man. The big man then in turn read out the letters to the rest of the crowd. He got to the end of the word, and still with the confidence, he started this whole chant as if nothing, as if nothing had happened in between. He said, what's he been got? The whole stadium, both sets of hands like, we've got no idea, mate. Absolutely no fucking idea. One bloke, though, one bloke shouted, dyslexia! <laughs> um, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you kindly welcome to the stage, Jack Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. 
ex-girlfriend Anna. <laughs> Not Anna, as we used to call her then. <laughs> it's silly, it's silly. Um, God rest her soul. <laughs> the worst with the fast food is my dad. 76 years old, never been to a fast food restaurant in his life. We took him to a McDonald's. My father ordered a quarter pounder and then asked to have it cooked medium rare. <laughs> Can't do fast food. Technology is the other one he can't get his head around. Right? We got a little game I play with him. Okay, a little prank. If your old man is bad with technology, you've got to do this. I wait for my mum to buy a new bit of kit for their house. Doesn't matter what it is, any kind of machinery, laptop, coffee machine, new printer. And then I tell my 76-year-old dad that it's voice activated. <laughs> oh my god, Liverpool. You have not known true joy until you have seen a 76-year-old man tell an electric blanket to go fuck itself. <laughs> I'm not in ages. I'm not in ages. I think it's very important. I think it's very important. I think it's very important. We've got a need to respect our elders. To that end, you know, I was visiting my granny recently, my dear old grand. You know, we've got to check them all. Check their wealth. No. No, check that she is okay. And the problem with my nan, right, is she is very much from a different generation. Oh my god, we were clearing out her house recently. We found some quite dubious things on her shelves. Oh dear, Gran! Yes, I know, I know. I was like, nan, please, it is 2017. Who is still using VHSs? It's just. <laughs> I mean, that's not great either. And that is how I found it. God's honest truth, that is how I found it in her house. If you're going to have your golly mug out on the shelf, which you shouldn't, please do not have it above your copy of Nelson Mandela's Long Walk to Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> she's unbelievable. She's unbelievable. She sits there all day, right? In her nursing home now. She sits there on her commode, the little chair with a potty underneath it. That's not the funny bit. <laughs> she sits there on her potty, knitting all day, watching Flog It. And she's just not having a lot of fun, okay? And it got me thinking, right? Because I read this article recently about writer Aldous Huxley. Yeah, you're right, laugh back to the bullshit. I saw a tweet. And <laughs> no, the point is, do you know what Aldous Huxley asked for on his deathbed? L S D the whack. No. No. He may have though, sir. I don't know. I wasn't there. It didn't say that in the tweet. He asked for a whack. Um, I love that. My kind of crowd. The um, No, he asked for LSD. LSD. That is the attitude more pensioners need to be taking. More geriatric people need to start experimenting with recreational drugs. I'm not saying do drugs when you're younger. That's a bad idea. You might get into them. But when you're 85, living in a nursing home, fuck it. <laughs> the hand breaks off. You want to try everything once. If I lived in a nursing home, I'd get on it all the time. Also, they've got the perfect setup. Disposable income, nurses on call, daytime television, a chair you can shit yourself in. It's perfect. <laughs>
I think Goofy the Troll and Frozen. Yeah, we all remember Goofy the Troll from Frozen, one of the main parts. Mm -hmm. I had one line. <laughs> it's just my one line. <coughs> I troll for the bid you farewell! Don't all applaud at once. Please, no, it's not enough. It's just one woman laughing in my face. No, I'll admit it wasn't the best line and it wasn't the best part, but I'm so proud of it. You know, I told everyone, everyone that I'd ever met that I was going to be in Frozen. Yeah, I'm going to be in Frozen, so I'm a Disney film, so I'm Frozen. The film comes out, right? I'm watching, I'm watching Frozen there on the screen, okay? And I'm seeing it, I'm watching the film. I see my character! I see Goofy the Troll on the screen. I see the fat little fucker clearing his throat, about to do the line, and then the camera cuts away to Princess Elsa, and she starts singing. I'm sorry, the report, I was shouting on the screen. I was like, hey, excuse me, Elsa, zip it, bitch, could be had something to say. <laughs> well, I'm asked to leave the cinema. <laughs> I called Chad, I'm like, Chad, I was just watching the film and uh, couldn't see my line in it. What happened? He went, ah, oh, kid, I'm so sorry. I've been so longer with work. I forgot to tell you. Disney called, and unfortunately, your part of the movie was reduced to a non-speaking role. A non-speaking role. Chad, it is an animation. That means I'm not in it. Hey, kid, calm down. You gotta just let it go. Let it go? Don't you hear that shit? <laughs> It's like, it's fine, it's gonna look great on your IMDb. Oh, it's gonna look great on my IMDb, is it, Chad? But I am the 81st listed cast member of 82. I'm below the guy that made the grunting noise for the fucking reindeer. <laughs> that is the only evidence that my performance in Frozen exists, which is probably for the best, given the circumstances. You know, thank God there is not a picture of me promoting a film that I'm not in. Oh, wait, no, there is a picture of me promoting a film that I'm not in. Look how pleased I look with myself. Look at that smug face. You're not in the film, mate. And that'd be fine. That'd be fine if I'd never seen the light of day. But as we've already established this evening, some of my friends are dickheads. And one dickhead friend in particular, Mr. Gabe Turner, found out about the existence of this picture and thought it would be funny to share it all over social media. Not only that, Gabe figured that if I was promoting this film that I'm not in, maybe there are other films that I'm not in that I could also have been promoting. So the following day, I went onto Facebook and this is on his wall! <laughs> and the next day, I went on and that is on his wall! And this is the best one, because time and effort has gone into making it on the third day, I went onto Facebook and that's on his fucking wall! <laughs> It's on a day-to-day -day basis. Ditto, oxygen mask. But can I speak for us all when I say Liverpool? We have got the seat belt fastening down. <laughs> what do they think will happen if they leave that bit out from the demonstration? Every time the light picks on in the plane, it just descends into chaos. People trying to ram the buckle into their eye socket. It's not working! Not working! Oh, we have a routine on planes, and we're used to it, so no one questions the routine. I'm the guy who questions the routine. Here we are, finally, this is some relatable material. Every man coming, chat my whole talk about planes. We've all been on it. Relatable. So, anyway, I'm in my flat bed on the top deck, and, <laughs> and I'm doing something that we have all done hundreds of times before all day. Lifting up the blind to take off and land. And for the first time ever, I decided I would ask the stewardess why I had to lift up the blind to take off. And that it is a question that I regret asking. Because I have fact-checked her response. And this is the genuine reason on the Civil Aviation website. I said, excuse me, madam, out of interest, why do I have to lift up the blind to take off and land? She looked at me, do you know what she said? She went, well, sir, if something were to go wrong with the engine, you are the pilot's eyes. <laughs> I beg your fucking pardon! I'm not ready for that level of responsibility! And no one told me that when I purchased the ticket! I was very much under the impression that I was driving in the capacity of passenger, not fucking co-pilot! Also, I think you may have picked the wrong guy! I am the guy you want, keeping an eye out for engine failure! This is your lookout! Really? <laughs> so how does that scenario play out in your head, Adam? I mean, 
interest when I too chance upon something out of the window. Those windows diving towards the ground, and I look out and I see smoke billowing from the engine. I meant to what? Just amble up to the cockpit, put my head through the door. Awfully sorry, gents, your eyes in the back here. I don't know whether you're aware of this, but one of the wings has fallen off. <laughs> you might want to pass me a seatbelt. I will send someone through to show you how it's done. Thank you. <laughs> in this costume as you are. Spent all the money on the horse, and I told them I want to look like one of the trolls from Frozen, and I've ended up looking like the love child of Shrek and Ron Weasley. <laughs> Don't fucking take a picture now, mate! You have the whole show with me looking nice, but I am! That was not encouragement to take more photos! <laughs> By the way, this is the mask Flint off used to wear as a baby. Um, anyway. <laughs> I uh, also, <laughs> as I walked on stage, there's a, there's a fan that you switch on and I was definitely meant to turn off the switch as I stepped on stage and I haven't. So this thing just keeps fucking inflating and I don't know how to turn it off. How can this show get end with me just floating off up into the roof? The switch bit is inside me, so I don't know. Not inside me, obviously that's not. <laughs> okay, oh, what am I doing? One day they'll take me seriously. <laughs> <coughs> oh my. The smoke goes wide on the mountain tonight. Not a footprint to be seen. Who the fuck's this? I'm in isolation. Okay, it's just that I had a line. I went to do <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm goofy, I say, and then I troll people. Don't let what them in, don't let them see. Be the good girl you always have to be. Can see don't feel, don't let them see. Don't let them know. Don't let them see. Don't let them see. Don't let them know. Don't let them see. Don't let them know.